friend to the rich, famous and frankly dubious, but also friend to the poor and dying of <coughs> Calcutta. Mother Teresa has become the stuff of legend, controversy and myth. Does she deserve sainthood? Uh, Dr. Chatterjee, um, now you actually were, um, you testified yes, against uh, Mother Teresa's beatification in 2003 with, with Christopher Hitchens, who's, who's written about this. Now, she's seen as a sort of icon of caring, a sort of a benchmark of compassion, Mother Teresa. But there are aspects of her life and work that trouble a lot of people. What troubles you? Well, I mean, where do you start? I mean, practically anything that's known about her is shrouded, shrouded in mystery and myth. Um, you know, where the, she apparently she had runs a home for the dying. If you have, you don't have to go there. Just look at pictures of the home for the dying. The people there don't even have proper beds. I mean, they're made to lie on these hammocks called pallets. They're not allowed to get up. And during Mother Teresa's lifetime, there was an official policy. Can you imagine an official policy to reuse needles over and over again? And this was when AIDS for HIV first came out. And there was absolutely no compassion there whatsoever. No, there were limited resources. Oh, well... Oh, no, there were beds, and, they, and Mother Teresa took them out because she said that people who were suffering would be closer to God. Yeah, if they suffered. That's, that's not comforting the dying, that's actually making things worse. What about, have you ever heard of a hospice where their relatives, relatives and friends are not allowed to visit? They're not allowed to get up and walk? There's no yard to walk? It's, it's, it's a brutalisation. Was she a hypocrite? I would say completely, yes. Well, of course she was. She ran these places. Then when she was dying, she went to the most expensive clinic in Switzerland and had state-of-the-art treatment. Not only when she was dying, she had any treatment. Mm. I'll show you pictures if you want. This is the, this is the Birla mm. Heart Institute in Calcutta itself, where she had numerous angioplasties and heart uh, treatments. Mm. She went we can't really see them on the television. Okay, we'll take your word for it. But, uh... Do you, did she, for, for minor ailments, she went to the Scripps Clinic in La Jolla, California. All right, well, where did the money go? <coughs> she it went, went on, on religious um, activities. Uh, she kept her money in the Vatican Bank. Why? And why did she keep her money in the Vatican Bank? It's absolutely ridden with scandal. You know, the, um, it had this connection with the Banco Ambrosiano of, of uh, Naples, or in one of the Italian banks. And <coughs> there were killings, mafiosi dealings, there were money laundering. She took tainted money, did she? Absolutely tainted money. And we don't know where the money is. You know, the Charles Keating, the, the biggest, biggest, mm. biggest fraudster in US history until then, he gave her, we know that he gave her 1.25 million. Thousands of other people gave her loads of money. And they're all spent. Either they, they're languishing in the banks or they're spent on religious activities. And um, well, one, she had connections with dictators, did she? I don't mind if she had connections with dictators, but she spent her money. Uh, you know, fruitfully and to the benefit of the poor. Well, you worked with her, uh, Margaret Forrester. You were, do you recognise this picture? <coughs> um, I'm very surprised at some of the things you have to say. Mm -hmm. Mother Teresa was love in action at the heart of the world. Okay. And I think really her, her life and her work speaks for itself in almost every country of, uh, on the planet. Um, to respond to some of the things you're, you're saying... Um, well, why did she suck up to swindlers and tyrants like Charles Keating and the Duvaliers, for example? That's right. one of the charges. Yeah. She, Mother, Mother Teresa, like, like all religious, took three vows of uh, poverty, obedience, and, uh, char and uh, chastity. chastity. In her order, they took a fourth vow of charity, um, which she took very, very seriously. And that, for her, was not simply about someone who's dying in the gutter. It was charity towards everyone. Now, when someone came and gave her money, she said, look, I don't have the right before God to judge them. Do you deny and that if can I, somebody... Can I just finish? Can I just finish? And that, and that receiving their money was giving them the gift of peace of mind and heart. Okay, but do you deny that uh, having worked there, that you know, the, 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 she said many, many times, including in a Nobel Prize speech, mm. that she would go around the city looking for destitutes to pick up and bring to the homes, her homes. Well, that was her vocation. That is not something she did. You know that if you took a child, a very poor destitute child, to her orphanage, to her home, yeah. they would be turned away because they would say, this is not how we she operate. She said, I never turned a child That's away. That's what she said. But she, she believed that abortion was the worst I'm not talking about abortion. enemy of well, peace. I'm not talking about abortion. I'm and talking she, about an no, actual child. And she, she, she actually said, I will never, I would never ever turn a child well, away. Well, maybe come on to the, the, well, the that's, a, that's an unborn yeah. child. 
but not actually a child child. But, but, but she if, has a home there in Calcutta, which I went to myself, how, filled with children, yeah, but, mentally but, disabled, but if, physically if, disabled. If you, if you brought a child to her doors, yeah. they would be turned away because they, they had so many conditions and uh, you know, the rules that they would... Well, they obviously would, she had to work within the, within the limits of the resources that she uh, had. Margaret, she, what did she mean? So why did she say that we never turn anybody away? We, she didn't. And do you well, know let, you, let me ask this as well, because there's another important point yeah. in, the, in, our, in our time yeah. here. She said, I think it, it is very beautiful for the poor to accept their lot. Yeah. W what did she mean? What, what she meant by that, I believe, is that in, in, the, in the poverty, she found Christ. She saw Christ there. He, and she, she believed that when, when she was working with the poor, when she was touching them, she was actually touching Christ. And she stands in complete contradiction, really, to the modern mentality that all suffering is bad. We must not have anything to do with it. She, she, she actually said, look, suffering is transformative. It in itself is evil. But we can work to transform Six it. Six months of the year she was spent abroad, outside of Calcutta. Yeah. So when was the last time she t actually touched a poor? Can you tell me? Have you ever seen? You have seen we have seen uh -huh. millions of pictures of her. Indeed, have you I, ever I, seen I'm interested in this sorry. idea too. It's all right, because I saw Kate trying to come in there. Yeah. That, uh, and I know how exercised you are about this, but Kate, <laughs> suffering is transformative. Isn't this just a case? There, isn't there some beauty in that? No, what we're looking at with Mother Teresa is a woman who, who was by... Uh, I mean, of course, when we grew up, we were all taught that she was this sort of perfect being. In fact, it was almost like a watchword for all mm. that was good and wonderful. But in actual fact, Mother Teresa was a religious fundamentalist. She believed in religion and God above all else, above comforting human suffering, above improving human life, improving human condition, or getting people she out of poverty. She was true to her she principles. She believed yeah. only in religion. And when that meant increasing people's suffering, she went out and did it. She fought tooth and nail against contraception, against abortion, and against things which would have helped women out of poverty and improved those communities. <laughs> Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa believed in love, and she believed that abortion, contraception, and you euthanasia, think taking a bed away from a dying can person is love? Because I don't. Can I just finish? Can I just finish? She believed. She, she believes. Uh, she believed in in the power of love, which, in her view, and if, if you, I think to understand her work and who she is as a person, first of all, as well as her work. You almost need to have some sort of natural instinct for the spiritual because this, she saw it as not her work at all. It was God's work through you her. You think using a and same needle on 20 people is love? I think, that, you, I think, you, need to, selling, I think you need to look at that within context. Children for two Catholic couples for 100,000 rupees is love. There is a man called Jonathan Powell in Belgium. He has come on TV and mm -hmm. he's made it public that he was sold to a Catholic couple in Belgium for 100,000 rupees. Uh, this is a man who has appeared on a documentary in Calcutta TV in 1988 that happened. You're saying that Mother Teresa sold another her human being? Order, her order. Yes. It was rampant in those days. Now the government of India has clammed down. And because I, I think, I, I mean, before I, before we on to comment on that, I would really like to have really all the evidence before uh, and speak about it within context. If you give context. me your address, I'll send you this email. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is a conversation and debate which will carry on through, through lunch, I feel. <laughs> um,